welcome back. And if you're new, hi, my name is Alexis Jada and welcome. I have been MIA from story times. I did upload vlogs while I was gone. I went to California, went to Alan Ice's birthday party. I visited with my family and a bunch of fun stuff, you guys. So I was gone for a little bit and I feel like it was a very much needed break for myself. Even though I got really, really sick, I'm barely getting my voice back. So if I kind of like, it's because like my lungs and my daughter got pink eye. She passed it around. So my eyes are kind of like sensitive right now to the, the freaking lights. But I didn't do a story time while I was out there because I forgot my diary. And I thought it would be something cool and different since a lot of you guys have requested for me to read directly from the diary. So that's what I will be doing today. I miss you guys so freaking much. I love you guys. I have so much content that I still have to put out for you guys. Vlogs and all that good stuff. I hope you guys have been enjoying the vlogs. I've been enjoying editing them. I still have like, I still have a few more to edit. I have a TJ Maxx haul for you guys, a Marshalls haul for you guys, and a huge giveaway that I wanna be doing. But yeah, let me know what you guys are doing, what you guys have been doing. I would love to know. Did you guys do anything for your spring break? Let me know down below and let me know what you guys are doing right now. If you guys are cooking, if you guys are cleaning, if you guys are driving, if you guys are working, I would love to know that all down below. I miss you guys so freaking much and I love you guys so freaking much. Mesos a todos. So sit back, relax, and let's get into this story time. Boom. Or I'm going to do something different, but before we jump into it, I'm going to catch you guys up to speed of like where I'm at. So I wake up, I get the text, call Joe, talk to Joe. He drops a bomb of it might be his. Now I was devastated. Devastated is like such a gut freaking kick it was such a gut-wrenching like feeling where in my mind even though I didn't see myself with Joe it was just the whole like oh that he's mine like he was something that I felt like should have been off limits and I felt like this was it this was it this was this was gonna be the cherry on top and this was gonna be like my villain story of like I don't trust nobody and I just felt like it was such an ultimate betrayal and I wasn't happy with that I was like no way like no way how are you gonna hurt me this deep and be so stupid like I know we are we're always told well some of us are always told that like boys will be boys and they think what their pito first before anything else and they always like to see the woman struggle to see how much they'll put up with to see if you're a ride or die Fuck that okay that you don't have to none of it you don't have to put up with a lot and be like yeah see so he knows like i'll i'll put it i'll i'll stand beside him. no all you're doing is teaching him that you will be dragged through the fucking mud he'll pick your your ass up dust you off and andale we're gonna go again to see how far how far your loyalty is how far you are really willing to ride this out like it's so it's so gross so everyone's still sleeping and i don't even want to be around my mom because i am so triggered with what happened with the night before and i feel like she just didn't understand where i was coming from she constantly was in this whole mindset of like oh my god you hate me you don't want to be around me and I felt like she knew how to tug at my heartstrings. My mom was really, really, really good at making me feel bad and making me feel like, oh, okay, like maybe I did do something wrong. And my mom would also put this kind of like fear into me. At the time, I really didn't like look that deep into it. But my mom would say things like, what if something happens? Like you know, tomorrow is never a promise and then you're gonna feel guilty and you're gonna be this, and you're gonna be that. And it would fuck me, it would really like fuck me. And I feel like that's why I even started saying that in my adulthood where I would let things go because I'd be like, God forbid something happens and that person dies in a car wreck, a car wreck, a car accident or something and we were fighting. And it was just really, really, really really hard but i knew that i didn't want to be around her that day like i just knew i didn't want to deal with it i felt stupid i felt humiliated just with how stupid jasmine was like you see the text messages 
and I just kept replaying her sitting on his lap and I don't know about you guys, but I have this thing of like, oh my gosh, I wish I would have done it this way. I wish I would have done it that way. Like what would happen if you would have lost your shit and just beat the f out of everybody? Like I would do that. And it was such a torture thing that I put my mind and heart through because I would constantly play out so many scenarios in my head that like, oh, I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. I wish I could do this. I wish I could do that. And then I would feel guilty. Like, no, you don't want to be like that. And then it was just like, you should do this and this and that and this and that. And it was just so freaking much that honestly was just so exhausting. And I would just end up so mad. And then the guilt would kick in of, but she tried Lex. Like, at least she tried. Like, yeah, she missed the mark, but like she did go out of her way, waste her gas and she did try. Even though these people are pieces of shit, like she tried. Like who can who can honestly say that like their mom tried? And then the other part of me would be like, nah, she brought the bitches around that like, you don't even f with to like humble you in a way or to like put you down because my mom wanna put her hands on me. They could put their hands on me. Like it was just so toxic. It was so freaking toxic. And I would say like the meanest things to myself. Like she probably brought them around so I would feel ugly and I would feel insecure because maybe, 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 maybe my mom does hate me because of what happened with my stepdad. Because I don't know if I already mentioned, but my cousin, the f stupid puta face, told me that my mom had told her some really foul, foul stuff that my mom felt towards me. And I was like, in disbelief like bitch you're lying like my mom would never ever 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 say that type of shit. like why would you try to hurt me that way why like why would you lie like why would you lie and then years later my mom was going through it and my mom repeated that fact to me and I like even recorded it so like I have it on recording till this day and we're like those words even my mom's mouth I was like oh my god oh my god Puta sucia face was right. You do think that way, and it hurt. It hurt. It hurt. But my mom says that she goes into such like a wild place that she doesn't even remember it. She don't want to talk about it. And my mom has already had to apologize and stuff. But rewind to that moment. I kept thinking like maybe this is why like my mom keeps bringing these bitches around because my mom secretly is like upset with me and is mad with me about like what happened because I was so conditioned at a young young age of you know better no you knew you know better it just really sucks because it's such a guilt that I wish nobody nobody would feel like nobody at all like it's such a lonely 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 place to be when you are violated this way because you literally like at times, I feel like the lucky ones have support and people do the right thing and they stick beside you. And then there's the ones who aren't lucky, who get violated and they lose everyone around them. And you're constantly in this thing of feeling that like you broke up the family, you know? But it's not okay to like, for those people to make you feel that way. So that's how I was feeling. I was feeling like all these feelings and I was just like, oh my God, I just want to get past it. Like, I just want to get past it. And my mind just wouldn't let me. It was like, nope, this is why she's wilding out is because of what happened. Like, it's on you, it's on you. And she just wants to hurt you. And I just didn't want to be there no more. Like, I just did it. I was like, uh, I don't want to be here. Like, I don't. So I walk out and everyone is just like knocked out, knocked out, knocked out, knocked out. Tell my mom. I message her and I tell her like, hey, I'm gonna go. I just can't like do this right now. Super dramatic, but it's honestly like how it really felt. Like I just can't be around you right now. Like I just, I, I just can't. Time passes and I ended up at the beaches and then this is where we're at now. So I'll be reading directly from my diary. And it's a lot different. I feel like when I read directly from here, I might stop because I don't wanna say their name. I might stop because there's just some things that are just too personal that I don't want to share because with my diary I feel like I felt like this was a place that I could like 
write every single detail because in a way I felt like in the future maybe I could go back to that exact pin point moment and it was like the butterfly effect and I would be able to like relive that moment again and maybe change things. I know, it's wild. So I went back with the peaches and I've been with them for like a few nights. So things are kind of kicked off and we're just, so let's just fast forward to where we're at now. Oh, and for, you guys are like best friend, like Sam's not your best friend. I know, it's being a smart ass because of what's gonna happen now. And this stupid bitch would always be like, you're my best friend. When she wanted me to be in her corner, she wanted me to see her side because she knew like that's something that I really wanted was to have like a true, true best friend. And so this bitch would play on it and be like, oh, you're my best friend. You know what I mean? So anyway, sit back, relax, and let's get into the store door. Lex, you're my best friend. <laughs> Can you believe that dumb fuck bitch let these words leave her mouth? Best friend. Yeah, let me fuck every guy you like because that's what besties do. Lex, you're my best friend. Please let me talk. Yeah, right. Shut the fuck up. But I let her because let's hear her out. For all I know, she tripped on his dick and they got stuck. Like bitches do. Berra. Sam keeps apologizing, saying it's probably not even his and they fucked at the very beginning of us talking. Which, ew, fucking gross. Just staring at Sam pisses me off and her crying and gagging makes you want to scream, stop. God, I really hope Sam isn't pregnant because what the fuck? Not only is it weird, but I'ma definitely have to quit and lose Joe. And this familia. No way in hell would I be looking after her pregnant ass and have Joe's ass right here. What a fucked up Cinderella story, huh? Starring Alexis fucking Jada. Bitch, I don't got a fairy godmother. Shit, I don't even have a mom like that. And my godmother ain't even around. Have her name, but where the fuck is she? The kids are fighting and all I want to do is escape. Don't even feel like functioning today. The kids are on one and from the sounds of it, so are the peaches. Totally heard them last night and Mr. Peach didn't give a damn to wait for Mrs. Peach. Buff I love. Ew, yuck. I really hate that my brain can't turn off until they are finished. Why can't I sleep in the other room? Oh yeah, because Miss Peach is controlling S. I swear they can see what I do in here and can't even talk out loud and what if you're reading this Mr. Peach? That's gross. Laugh out loud, just kidding. Or am I? Oh my God, I'm crazy. Am I? Or are they? Anyways, back to you know who. I swear I just have random thoughts. She tells me it's probably not even Joe's and they fucked at the very beginning and raw because she wanted to feel closer. She then says she probably isn't and it's just a little late on her period, but it's but she is so glad that this is all out in the open because she can finally breathe. Like if she ever stopped. And in a slip way, I think she just wants to hurt me because maybe she heard Joe ask about me or heard me talking to him again. I don't know. I don't know why Joe though and not the ex. It's like Joe is the one who has bank and maybe you're just overthinking Lex and want a little perfect excuse of what to make you feel better and this stupid why. Babies are blessings though, it's going to be crazy her being a mama. Kind of want to stay around for the baby stage but nothing more. I wonder if I'm going to be a young mom. Can you imagine? I can. Literally, I would take my baby everywhere with me. Would feel like my everyday schedule. What would really change? A lot. I had to go clean this dirty ass restroom. Mr. Peach literally pees everywhere but the toilet. What's so annoying, it's fresh and wet. So he could literally clean it his damn self instead of calling instead of calling Mrs. Peach to tell me, Alexis, why haven't you cleaned the restroom? Um, maybe because he just took a fresh and piss, ma'am. I don't know how she could talk to me with a straight face and smell the foul drops at the same time. Disgusting. She probably thinks she's cool, acting all nonchalant as her nose is stuffed already since, since the babies drop bombs like clockwork. Laugh aloud, stupid. So they took Sam back to wherever they had her hostage. 
I keep repeating her stupid sorry when I asked about her and the ex and she took a long pause with her dramatic ass breathing and she said, no. But you should talk to him. Um, for what? He's going to deny, deny, deny. So annoying. Why can't you just tell me what I thought the bullshit of talk to him? Why don't you just fucking tell me? I'm so sorry for being so emotional, Lex. I'm just all over the place, and my mom is pissed, hurt, disappointed. Yeah, 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 I told her. Kind of felt bad for her because who am I for her to feel sorry? You know, like, who apologized for f***ing someone's crush? Lover. Laugh out loud. Not lover because I'd never, like, let him hit it. Whatever, anyways. First of all, he's a walking infection with a cute ass face. That's all. But yeah, I do feel like she she should apologize, but then again, I feel guilty because she looks like she feels bad. Sorry, Lex. As it yet again repeats and her f***ing gag appears in my mind yet again. Repeat. The peaches are extra big mad today, and I think because of <clears throat> her visit. Maybe I should bug my mom today. Maybe we can go to the aquatic. If I tell her I pay half, I miss my brothers. And then this is like a few hours later, because like, I wouldn't just write all in one session sometimes. Sometimes I'd come back, and then sometimes I'd be like, PS, PS, PS. You think I should have money? Of course not, Ma. That's why I asked. I pay half. Then she just says, Give me your half now, and we'll go next week. I hated when my mom would do that. I would literally, like, do that, and then we wouldn't. Something would come up, and I would have to be understanding about it, and then how dare I get upset. Or there would be times where she would be like, You can't go back over there. And I'd be like, Oh my God. Like, can you like do it? She's like, I don't got gas money. And I'm like, okay, what if I give you like $20? She's like, you think that's all it takes to fill up the gas? And then I would pay my mom like 20, 40 bucks and then I'd get to go wherever, right? So that was like a constant thing. Or like even when I got pregnant with Andrew, my biological was like paying child support still. And my mom would be like, here, you can have the card. He didn't pay no money on it and I'd be like thanks mom and I would have the card and I didn't know because I was so young you guys so young I was smart on some things but I was so so like naive to a lot of things and just not educated because why the fuck would I be educated in that you know what I mean anyways I didn't know there were certain dates that the child support would hit and so I would be checking okay let's just say I would be checking all week and then like the 10th is when it'd be deposited right I'd be checking all week and then I noticed my mom would come around and she'd be like give me the card i'm gonna cancel it and i'd be like there's no money in it and she's like you think i'm stupid you think i'm stupid and i'd be like no like i've been calling there's no money in it my mom would call and of course there'd be money in it and me i'd be like how, the f did, how does she know how does she know and then like slowly but surely i start picking it up and i'm like oh that's how so i would literally give her my child support so the ex wouldn't get kicked out she wouldn't take Andrea away from me because even though my mom was like off doing crazy stuff, if she wanted me home, she would threaten to take my Andrew from me. And where I was a minor who had her own baby, my mom would be like, I could take him. Like, I could take him. Like, don't make me call the cops and go get him. Like, I will take him from you. And that's like a huge reason why I got emancipated from my mom was because she was always threatening to take my kids. And I was like, oh my God, there's no way. Like, there's no way. And yeah, my mom like made it hell for me. And I would be calling my grandma, I'd be crying like, mom, I don't want, grandma, I don't want her to take Andrew from me. And my grandma would have to calm me down and be like, Alexis, where do you think she's gonna take him? Like, honestly, where? She doesn't have anywhere to sleep. They're not just gonna hand over your child. Like, what is wrong with you? Are you okay? And I, I get so scared because I, I did not want her to take my Andrew from me. Like, I did not want to lose my son to my mom. Like, I was just like, there's no way, like, oh my God. Or she would like threaten so many things. So I would pay my mom. Like I would literally pay my mom. And <sighs> incidences like this is what would piss me off. So sometimes I'd pay her in advance and sometimes I wouldn't. Sometimes she'd be like, we need grocery money. We think I should money, blah, 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 blah. 
And I'd be like, no. And then give her some money. Or it was just like the dumbest things, you guys. Okay? So, you think I should pay me? Of course not, mom. That's why I asked. I'd pay half. Then she said, just give me the money now and, I, and we go next week. No, the f we won't. <laughs> I hate when she takes, she takes my money or threatens me with, then come home. I let you have too much freedom. Anyways, and you could be helping me out here. I don't want to help. I just feel weird there. And the help they want is for me to be babysitting while they just get to f off. Oh, but not there, Lex. Yeah, not here. Well, that's a lie. But I'm not going to be a maid there and not get paid when I got more stuff here. And it's different. It's a different sort of bad. So I do lots of ass kissing to end that fight. I feel like with my mom, it took a lot of like making up or whatever, especially when money was involved. Cause my mom would like really threaten me and like, I'm gonna go get you right now. Like, I'm gonna go get you. Like, you think that you can talk to me this way? Like you got me up, like come home right now. And then my mom would take my belongings and then it would just be a whole shebang. And I just didn't want to do that. And in my mind, I was like, okay, she's bringing up of like, come home. I don't want to go over there. I don't want to go over there. It's a different type of bad and I wish I could explain. I wish I could, you guys could picture the type of bad so that you guys could understand like, oh, okay, I see. You know what I mean? A few hours later, Miss Peach called me down and she asked if I wanted to go get some new bags with them. Everyone's all dressed and then there's me, all bummy. The kiddos were cheesing hard, so of course I said yes. I picked up Little Nugget and headed towards the door. And boom, we both ate it. Straight gaka. Totally killed the mood and tried to get up so fast and grab Nugget before he could breathe and let out that loud ass cry. Nope. Mr. Peach snatched up Nugget and says, always, Alexis, siempre, always. But with a Spanish and a little pizzazz because it hurts my feelings. I felt so dumb, and I told him I'd stay behind. And Miss Peach says, Que bueno, que bueno. Laugh out loud, f***ing out, you stupid bitch. So they left, and I'm just picking up after the casa. Making a mess and then cleaning it so I have something to do. So that time can pass, and I can knock the f*** out. And it's almost 10, and they're still not home. Hate being alone because I swear I hear everything. Just going to stay upstairs and wait. Yep, they're back. And they brought some tacos. And Mr. Peach, let me have one. I wanted like 20 more. I swear, I think this is like why I overeat so much is because before I was like so limited to like what I could get. So I feel like now that's why like I over order or I overspend or just like a lot of things. And I was watching a show on Netflix and this guy, he didn't have a lot growing up and he became a hoarder and it made me feel like that's what I'm doing now. And like, I, I know it and I've been told it, but I feel like in moments like this, when I read about like getting one taco, like, and I wanted 20 more. Like I wanted to be able to like grub, you know? Um, it just don't, don't be like that with food. Don't be like that with kids. Like I hate when people are greedy with kids, especially when it comes to food. Like that is such a, ugh for me. Like you have no idea. It's such a, my inner child screams when I see stuff like that. Don't be like that with food. Miss Peach looked annoyed. I think it was hers. And I was going to get another one and she she goes, Alexis, you didn't make yourself something to eat while we were gone? She used to do that a lot. I hated that. I hated when they would come back with like leftovers and Mr. Peach would be like, oh yeah, go ahead, grab whatever you want. Like, if you want anything, go ahead and show it. I was gonna eat that in the morning. Offer her your stuff, not mine. Like, oh, I knew I should have just finished it. And it was like such a nasty, like, ew, que asco, dude. Like, I didn't have it. And then there'd be times where like, I wouldn't even bug 
okay? I wouldn't even bug for like the leftovers or like pick at it or whatever. And she would just let it go to waste, like let it go to waste. And I'd just be like, wow, like you're really gross. Like you're really, really gross. Like who, who does that? Like who raised you, you fucking bitch? Like it was just so gross. I didn't understand it. I never, I, I'll never understand it when people are like that with food. Like never, 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 never. Like it is such a nasty way to be, like for real. You didn't make something to eat while you were gone. Um, yes, you asshole. But who wouldn't want tacos? <laughs> so annoying. So I only ate one. It was bomb ass though. <laughs> Mr. Peach said I could have his and she got annoyed and said the kids could have it for breakfast. Ah, te dije, te dije. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> so I just told him I was full. I was so scared to blink because I didn't want to be dramatic and have my stupid tears fall, laugh out loud, over some damn tacos. So I played it off and watched TVs with the kids and get them ready for bed. Going up the stairs, I can just hear Mrs. Peach annoyed how I was just going to eat all the kids' tacos and I was going overboard. She's so annoying, but I get it. I did have the full ass fridge and they were running errands, so it's different, I get it. I had the place to myself and I could have made me a full course meal if I wanted. I get it. It doesn't matter, Lex. I just hate the way she talks sometimes because I'm not even that big for her to be such a damn bitch. The kiddos are knocked out and they probably had a lot of fun today. Love, Lex. P.S. Joe keeps texting. Tell her I do too, yes. Joe keeps texting and I don't want to jinx it and open his messages because if I do and he stops messaging and then what if he is the daddy? Sex is sex. Yeah, what a dickhead. Yeah, Lex. Stay mad, please. Boom, boom, boom. Answer your phone. I slept the f in. Miss Peach says my phone has been ringing nonstop and yup it has. It's my grandma and I don't want to answer it. Two reasons. One, my mom is pissed. Two, she's locked up. Three, she wants to talk. Laugh aloud, I gave you three reasons. Three, see. <laughs> Laugh aloud, I gave you three reasons. Ugh. I don't know how I just slept through all my alarms. I hate when I do that. I wanted to see if my mom was in the area and we could get breakfast or go to the DI. Something so I'm not thinking about Sam's gag face or Joe. My phone feels hella hot for my grandma's calls. And Joe's long ass messages. Haha, <laughs> a little brag. But it but is it really a brag when he's just a damn dog who fed Sam and doesn't even know if it's his? And I've been thinking since Sam said I gotta highlight the names next time if I'm gonna read from the diary because I keep wanting to say they're fucking nights. And I've been thinking since Sam said it was at the beginning of us talking. That's been a hot ass minute. And the time frame isn't adding up to a baby barely right now. Unless they still been and sucking. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. And I'm scared to ask. And I'm scared to ask Joe how many times because I know his dumb ass probably writes it in a pocketbook but I want to ask so my mind doesn't run wild on different scenarios of this or that I really wish Skilla and I were on better terms so I can just cry to her and tell her she was right yeah right she probably sees Sam's point and makes some stupid ass reason for this or that I swear there's a pocketbook of dumb excuses for putas 101 <laughs> secretly I want, I want to message Joe and tell him let's run away and let's start fresh, like a crazy novella. But I know deep down, I know he's not the one meant for me. My future husband is going to love me and not want to play so many mind games. Maybe then I'll get some real sleep. Peach is still pissed about the tacos, dude. Heard her on the phone with one of her friends, laughing about it, about how her night was, how when she got home, I went overboard and attacked the tacos. So gross. Like, 
why be that damn dramatic? <laughs> About the tacos. Grow up, you dumbass. Joe texted me and he said, this is the last message he's going to send because he's not going to keep chasing me. Um, excuse me? You didn't chase anything. What if he stops... You didn't chase anything. What if he stops texting me those long ass novels and it all just stops and I lo no longer have him? I want to give in, but for what? He's now Sam's and I can't share. I already share so much. Ew, stop. This all sounds so stupid. Go shower. Go shower these thoughts away. Random number texts. A random number text comes in. And my gut tells me it's the ex. And the message says, hey, is this Alexis? <sighs> I hate when they text that because like, you know who you're texting. Uh, yeah, you know, you know it is. Who is this? I should have said, what do you want? I missed a chance though. Haha. <laughs> I've been hooking up with your ex and you need to back off. All I said was, okay. Because honestly, <laughs> because honestly, I beat my left nut. Oh, <laughs> because honestly, I bet my left nut, it's the ex. And I just don't want to deal with it. And sure enough, sure enough, ring, ring, ring. The ex is calling. Boom. Ignore. Boom. Ignore. Boom. Ignore. And then here comes the messages. You're a fucking bitch. I know you don't care about me. There's someone else. Blah, 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 blah. Can the day be over? It's like, seriously, what is the point? Why can't he just say cute shit and calm down? He's the one in the wrong, not me. It's so exhausting. He really thinks it's my fault and I'm not ready to say sorry. For what? He's literally hanging with other people, picking them up, hooking up with them. But yet, I'm the messed up one. How does that make sense? You need to change my underwear and wham. Mr. Peach comes in and says, he's been calling me, and what was I doing? Pulled my pants up quick and said, changing. He looks at me up and down and says, were you playing? Blank. What do I say? Now, I hated when they wouldn't knock. There'd be like a few times that they would knock, but I really, really, really hated it when Mr. Peach would just barge in because I feel like a lot of the times he was hopingly, secretly hoping that he would like catch me doing something. And it was always like bad timing or I literally would be like not doing anything. It seriously was like almost like always bad timing. Just like whatever. I could be like crying, I could be changing. I snuck a friend in. I was talking to someone on the phone or I was just like doing things where it's just like, you know, and I feel like maybe there'd be rare moments where I was just like sitting there and like not doing anything and I'd get like yelled at like, why aren't you down here? Like, why aren't you helping? But I honestly always felt like he was like the girlfriend always trying to catch like their boyfriend jack off. Like it honestly felt like that. I always felt like, what are you doing? Like it always just felt like, what the fuck? and you guys already know I have a lot of pee problems. And I constantly had to like change my underwear because it just, it just hurt. The doctors were like, oh yeah, like is you got to drink more water, you like, your body's changing and I'm, I'm young. So your body's changing, it's going through changes and stuff. And my mom did not like talking about stuff at all. Like anything down there, she was just like, eh, oh, oh, don't, no, I don't want to hear. It sucked. So I kind of had to like do my own routine of like, okay, like this or that or if like if I was being sexual and stuff like oh my gosh it hurt so much and I had to take like my ibuprofen or Advil and like a lot of water and then there's just some times where like I would just be on the toilet and I would like be passing kidney stones I don't know why it doesn't sound right like a kidney stone I don't know but I'd be peeing out like kidney stones and stuff and I didn't know when there was this thing that um the ex's mom would talk about if you would drink kamaika you would pee out like some like uh, she said um, like rocks out of like your pee hole and I don't even know if that's true because like the bitch is a liar But I would be hurting a lot down there So I had to change like my underwear frequently I'd 
obsessed with panty liners because I constantly needed to have panty liners or if I did have a bladder infection it hurt so much so I was constantly having to like be aware of like down there changing all that so that we get mad about like the, the bathroom breaks I would take or how often I had to do this or like why are you why are you sitting down like that or like why are you making that face or why are you so it was bad it was miserable and I hated it and I just had to deal with that blank what do I say I just looked at him and he apologized and he closed the door what the hell did he think he was funny yeah he did he thought he was always funny he always thought like oh i'm just joking or oh you're too sensitive or like oh it's just a joke the disgusting one so not funny and horrible timing can't even tell miss peach because i'll probably lose my job or she's going to think i want him it's hurting a lot down there i wish ma would hurry up and answer already so i'm gonna skip over the part where I'm waiting for my mom to hurry up and answer. We ended up getting in a huge fight and I just had to sit in the tub super, super late and just literally pee myself in the tub until it literally went numb and I couldn't feel anymore. Took my ibuprofen, went to bed, fought with my mom some more, fought with my mom some more. So I'm just gonna go over that chapter just because it's just a lot. <clears throat> so this one's a few days later. Carne asada, carne asada is what I hear Mr. Mrs. Peach yell at Mr. Peach. Carne asada, wait. I walked down the stairs slowly because I don't know what the fuck is up with all her attitude. We end up making eye contact and she screams, Why have you not got the kids ready yet? Que haces, Alexis? Que haces? Are you just playing around? Now... What was it that Mr. Peach had told me when he opened the door? Like, were you playing? So hearing that, it flashes in my brain like, y'all had the conversation, like y'all are stupid, like, ugh. So as those words left her mouth, I stare at Mr. Peach and my pants getting pulled up flash back in my mind. And I dare say, excuse me? what get ready so i ran back upstairs and i get the kids ready and at the same time i try to be nosy and hear them talk mr peach is yelling at her to calm the hell down or that they weren't going anywhere now mr peach would do that to mrs peach sometimes when she would get like to a 10 for like no reason like calm your titties like what's going on and he would kind of talk to her like a child and she would lose her sh like she would get so mad it was very very rare that she wouldn't pop off and like the times that she wouldn't pop off i'd be like we're all gonna die we're all gonna die because she hated being talked to like a child and i i understood it i understood it because like even when he when i would hear him talk to her like that like i would be like like you're pushing it like you're going overboard like why are you talking to her like she's one of the kids like you cannot talk to your wife the same way you talk to your children like what the is wrong with you especially when it comes to like discipline like it's weird it's weird and my mom's very my mama so in my mind i was like talking for her in my head like you got me who you think you're talking to like that you know what i mean her dramatic ass storms upstairs and slams her door and i still get the kids ready because she is pissed and i'm not trying to hear her more than i have to so i'm gonna give the i'm gonna give the babies nicknames because i'm not gonna say their real names of course so getting nugget and pumpkin ready and they seem to be on one so this should be fun mr peach knocks on the door then opens it and i don't know why but i say oh so you do know how to knock he looked at me so fogly and told the kids to go downstairs. I was scared. I don't know why I thought, yep, he's about to R word me. I don't know why my mind would always go deep like that or go like in a dark place. I do know why because of like my past and me being r and me being molested. It really puts your mind into that state when certain things like trigger you and then in the same breath you might be like well why did you say that or blah blah like stop we're not gonna point fingers here he's gonna discipline me why does my mind go so dark the kids leave the room and he just stares at me 
and then he leaves. Peach comes out of her timeout and tells me, I can go to the carne asada, but I cannot talk about Sam. Or I cannot talk about Sam at all, or I will be fired. Bitch, shut the f up. But I just nodded my head and said, yep. She rolled her eyes <laughs> and told me to go downstairs. I went to my room to grab my backpack and my girl stuff because my girl thing is hurting. And that f***ing bitch snatched it off me saying, stop your shit. Like, what the fuck is she on? I walk downstairs to sit with the kids and I wait to get told to go to the car because I don't want to just go to the car and get yelled at and be told, get access. So we just wait. Minutes pass and we get told to go to the car. Mr. Peach is first, the kids, me, and Mrs. Peach is behind me. I swear this bitch gave me a flat tire on purpose. I didn't want to give her the satisfaction of getting me pissed because I feel like she would pick at me to get a reaction and it was just something that she would just do. Like she loved to get a reaction to be like, estas loca, por que estas enojada? Bitch, knock it off, stop. And she would like do stuff like this, like the flat tire or she'd be like fixing a pelo from like my ponytail and she would like pull my hair or she would just be fixing my hair in general and be like, you got a cana and like pull and bitch that hair did not look white. That hair looked dark brown. What are you doing? Like just stuff like that. You know, she was very, very, very rude. So, and she would grab my backpack all crazy. So I was ready to score up with her. Like what's up? I didn't want to give her the satisfaction of me getting pissed. So I walked that shit off like a champ and took it got in the car and made sure not to be in view of Mr. Peach. That the drive was so long and slow that the kids passed out for a while. So you know, they're going to be full charged and ready to run wild. Great. More work for me. It's okay though. Maybe they'll tire me out so I won't dream tonight. The house was beautiful. As we get out, the kids and I get told to behave and be respectful and mid speech mr peach gets a call i'm smiling because this was a funny moment mr peach gets a call and smiles huge and walks off mrs peach is livid she gets in the car and dips she leaves us she left i didn't know what to do <laughs> Um, I didn't know what to do, so I take the kids inside and try to find Mr. Beach. I was literally like, is this a joke? <laughs> What's going on? Like, it was so, like, no way. No way. Like, she literally pulled out of the driveway like a loca and just, ah! The kids were too stunned to speak. Like, we were literally like, is, is this really happening? Like, is she really leaving? Like, what? And Mr. Beach was, like, gone. He was gone. He was like, what? So it was literally me and the kids. We just got our, our freaking speech, and I'm like, She's, she's gonna come back, she's gonna come back. He didn't even acknowledge that she left. He didn't even know that she left. He was just like, bye. Sancha called, bye, dipped. Like for real, it was just like, the tires screeched, di todo, and didn't give a damn. So I go inside and I say hi to everyone. Even though my, ner my nerves are super high and I'd rather run away. Y'all know how hard it is when you have anxiety and that just happened to walk into a house full of strangers you don't even know. Like, I didn't even know whose party this was. I didn't even know who this person was. Like, to go in. Like, what if I walked in the wrong house? What if they were like, who the f*** are you? Like, who is kids? Who is kids? Like, who is this? You know what I'm saying? It was, like, nerve-wracking, y'all. Nerve-wracking. I hate being left alone. Like, what the f***? Where did she go? I'm calling her straight to voicemail every single time. Like, it was literally like, call, ignore, okay, we're gonna redial, redial. We're gonna do this again, we're gonna do this again, okay? And I'm like trying to hold the littles close to me because we don't know these people, these are strangers. The kids see that I'm on the phone and they straight bolt in separate directions. Literally like a cartoon. I see. My heart falls to my ass and I feel like time is going so slow and I can hear my heart beat in my ears. I hate when I start getting like this, especially like in situations that are like very serious. Well, kind of, right? But like, no, it's a serious thing. Like we are like in this strange house. I don't like, 
where are you going children and i feel like i'm responsible for them even though dad dipped mom straight up went left i feel like they put so much responsibility on me that if anything happened to them they're gonna kill me i am so it was very scary you guys like for real like my son dramatic but it was it was very terrifying i scream <laughs> i scream to pumpkin and nugget everyone in the room just stared at me stupid like have you ever had one of those moments i'm pretty sure you've seen them on tv i'm pretty sure maybe you've experienced it too where you scream and people are just like like just staring at you like are you stupid are you dumb but it's like no you know they just bolted you know i'm calling them don't do this to me right now please <sighs> like what the fuck? look away stop staring at me please i'm freaking out i'm going through this huge ass house packed with 30 40 people it's beautiful so many people can't really look at their faces i'm freaking out i'm trying to find mr peach trying to call mrs peach what is going on i'm trying to not look scared and i see mr peach he's in the corner kind of like hiding he's in the corner it's like a hiding spot kind of i don't know i don't know how to explain it but he's in the corner holding a beer how did you have enough time to get a beer already are you serious he's cheesing huge and i tap him hard to get his attention Grab his shoulder to like turn him towards me and I see Voltamore. And she goes, oh, hi Alexis. So I'm gonna leave it there you guys. I love you guys so freaking much. If you guys enjoy story time, please make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already to keep notified. Hit the notification bell so that you are notified when I do post a new story time. And I will be uploading another story time very, very soon you guys. I'm getting a little bit better from my freaking cold so my throat is a little dry but i promise i'm not gonna have you guys wait very very long i promise i love you guys this is at those and i'll see you guys in my next other time bye